Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be creating a model to put into practice some of the lessons that we've covered up to this point. The part that we're going to create in this lesson is stored in the exercise directory of the course files. Let's begin our exercise by creating a new part. New part. OK. Now let's create a new sketch. Right click on the top plane, New Sketch. Let's just adjust my view a little bit. Now let's activate the line tool. I'm going to create a horizontal line and then a vertical line. Notice that the vertical relation symbol displays. Another horizontal line and another vertical line. Now let's create a tangent arc. I'm going to move the cursor until I see the dashed blue line and the angle is 180 degrees. Let's create another vertical line. Two more lines to close the profile, but I'm going to create them at off angles just so I can review how to add relations in the property manager later on. Right click and select to close the line tool. Now select this line and then add a vertical relation. We'll select this line, add a horizontal relation. When you're adding dimensions and relations in the beginning of your project, what you can do is move the sketch entities around to see which relations and dimensions are needed. To return to their original position, simply click Undo. I'm going to control select all of these lines. I'd like to add an equal relation, but as you can see, nothing's available in the property manager. The reason for this is because I selected all the lines as well as a point. See, point 5. Let's delete it from the selection list, and now the equal relation is available. By the way, if you add too many relations at the same time, the sketch can become distorted. The sketch is too crowded with relations. Let's go to the View menu from the Windows menu strip and deselect sketch relations. And let's display them again. Let's see if we can drag some entities around a little bit just to see where we still need some constraints. We're going to need to add two more dimensions. Let's give our arc a radius dimension of 20 millimeters. OK. Let's make this dimension 30 millimeters. OK. Now, as you can see in the status bar, the sketch is fully defined. Let's exit the sketch. Take an isometric view. Now we're going to apply the extruded boss. As you see, sketch 1 is already pre-selected in our design tree. When we activate the extruded boss tool, we'll automatically see a preview because the sketch was pre-selected. Let's cancel out to disregard those changes. If we click in the graphic area outside of our sketch, the sketch will be deselected. Now when I activate the extruded boss tool, SolidWork prompts me to select a plane for creating a sketch or to select an existing sketch. Let's select my sketch. For depth, let's leave it at 10 millimeters and click OK. Now it's time to save our file. File, Save. Let's call our part L-15 Part A. Lesson 15 Part A. Now click Save. At this time, let's create another part document file. Part, OK. We'll need another sketch. Right click on the top plane, Sketch. Let me just adjust my view a little bit. Now activate the line tool. First a vertical line. To accept the relation that SolidWorks suggests, just left click when you see the glyph. Basically what I'm creating is something that looks like a small staircase. Close the profile. Right click, select to deactivate the line tool. You don't need to create exact geometry right from the get-go. It does need to be in the ballpark close enough, but it's nothing to sweat over while you're starting out your sketch. There's plenty of opportunity to streamline as you continue with the project. I've just added an equal relation to all of the lines that I control selected. Here's an example of the distortion that can occur when you select too many entities at the same time for a relation. We'll deselect everything and now let's select fewer lines at a time. Or we can make the lines a closer match as I've just done here. Now let's add the equal relation and everything looks fine now. OK, we're ready to add some dimensions. Let's make the long dimension 80 millimeters. OK. And exit the sketch. 
Now activate the extruded boss command. For direction 1, let's use 10 millimeters. 20 millimeters in direction 2. We'll use a draft angle as well. 5 degrees. OK. Now let's create a second sketch. Instead of on a plane, we're going to do it right on this face. Right click on the face. I've got two options, edit sketch or create sketch. Let's opt for the new sketch. We'll take a normal two view. Now activate the rectangle tool. I'm going to drop my rectangle about here. Right click select to deactivate the tool. We don't have to create the geometry within the boundary of the face. We can create the geometry anywhere we like on this plane. Let's add an equal relation and apply dimensions. 30 millimeters. OK. Next, we need to define the position of our geometry. Let's say 10 millimeters from this edge. OK. 10 millimeters from the bottom. OK. In the status bar, we see that the geometry is now fully defined. Let's exit the sketch. Take an isometric view. Let's use the extrude tool again. Direction 1, 10 millimeters. Direction 2, let's change it to 60 millimeters. And click OK. Now in the Feature Manager, our design tree shows a second extrude. To edit the extrude, simply double-click in the graphic area on the feature, Extrude 1 or Extrude 2. Or you can right-click on the feature in the Feature Manager design tree, Edit, and then change the parameters in the Property Manager. One more thing I wanted to show you is the Merge Result option. Let's check it. This will merge the extrudes 1 and 2 into a single solid. Otherwise, they're going to be separate solids. And we're ready to save our work. Let's go to the File option on the Windows menu strip. Select Save. This part I'm going to call Lesson 15B, L-15B. We'll also be saving this as a SolidWorks part document. Later in this course, we'll be exploring the various file formats you see here. Some of them you will, of course, already be acquainted with, PDFs, JPEGs, some of the files, like the IGES, STEP, and STL files, may be new for you if this is your first time working in CAD design. Save. And in the design tree, our part name changes, L15B. The first part we created, Lesson 15 Part A, is still open and available. Go to Window and select it from the list of available open parts. We've also got the option to browse open documents. The shortcut key for that is Control Tab, a very handy shortcut. If you'd like to see the documents side by side, you tile them vertically. If you'd like to see them one on top of the other, you tile them horizontally. To return to the full screen of any document, double click on the document title bar. This concludes our tutorial on creating an extruded boss.